to start or going to wait on it? Oh, don't ask me. Don't you know why? Well, we waited on you this time. Oh, no. We did a lot of pouring. Did we? <laughs> yes, y'all did. We waited on you. And they encouraged you to move forward. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say you encouraged me to move forward. <laughs> Mr. Planners wants to say to you or see you about
that uh, there's going to be about 10 or 12 different species of this red eye. Now, I had the state record uh, for about 30 years, and it came out of the River. So our waters are rich in uh, this red eye bass. National Forest, uh, most of those creeks, like Shoal Creek, uh, there's an abundance of them. Uh, the state actually honors a, uh, a program where you can get a certificate for a certain size of this bass. But on the list, these are the miniatures. And when I mean that, if you know anything about the red eye, a, a big red eye would be about 10 inches long. Um, but some of these have actually hybridized. So we've got some gems. Uh, one of my boys on film, he actually broke the state record about three times in the last year and a half. And uh, we did not pursue it. Because a lot of times when you uh, chase a record like that, you end up having to kill the fish. So we take our pictures and we got our smiles and waited and all the whole nine yards and put it back. But I've got people from <clears throat> all over the country. I've got uh, pictures that I can share. I can put you uh, together a presentation. But people from outside this area love coming here. We have such a diverse uh, river system. We have such a diverse system uh, for uh, fish. I mean, we have five or six of the species right here. We don't even have to leave here. And, and most people don't know that. I mean, if, if you were to catch a red eye, you probably wouldn't know what it was. But there's some very specific things about this red eye. And, um, Does it act like trout, too, in a lot of ways? Well, most of the old timers, uh, we call it a trout. But it's not a trout. It's, it's a black bass. And when I uh, broke the state record, uh, the fish biologist thought it was a shoal bass, which is a totally different species of fish anyway. But I think it's an awesome opportunity for our county to highlight our county. Uh, I just submitted an article to a national publication, and they asked me, um, as part of my part of the, the uh, article, where would you go and say out of that You know, you, you try to do as many states as possible. I said, I can go right here and play with Kenny. Because right here within a 20, 30 mile radius, I mean, it's some of the best fishing in, in the world as far as uh, creek and river fishing. We are unique by the fact that we are in that Appalachian chain. So our, our rivers and creeks have unique qualities. <clears throat> you have lowland qualities in a river, you got highland qualities. And we have that intermittent, they're, they're both. I mean, just like you're on top of the river, you can be in 30 foot plus and then you can get in just sandbars in and, and just a little bit. And uh, so there's a lot of people that love to come here. And um, I, I feel honored that, that Adam would invite me to come. I, I don't know nothing but fish, but, you know, I'm not. <laughs> when <I> just, <laughs> your, ask, your main thing is you're asking for this to be posted at the Lloyd Oak Canoe Trail input. They're going to put, this, this, this native fish is going to put these up in over 50 places in Alabama. On a metal sign. On metal signs, that's right. And again, I've got, I got uh, so many different organizations that want to be a part of this. And the logos are on the bottom. And, and go ahead. Is most of these, are, are these in some of the lakes or most of them in the rivers? They're going to be in rivers and creeks, a lot of moving water. Okay. But I would say in the uh, national forest, there's probably some in some of the lakes. I do know for a fact, which that's not public, Camp Sequoia is full of Good, cold, fresh water. That's how moving options. Yes, it's going to say Tallapoosa, right? Right, they'll change it based, based on, because we obviously want to put the one, there's on 49, there's one that goes in Terrapin, which is the Coosa Basin, and then that will change the Lord Owens will be with the Tallapoosa. Well, so you put just like this fish right here. Right, right. I would tell you, just by looking at that fish right there, that come out of the Coosa Basin, because it has an orange fence. Ours do not have that orange tint. Ours have white tips on everything. So, you know. Well, and, and what I'll add to this as far as the chamber and how we're involved is, um, uh, you know, Alabama Power is push, pushing the crop camp in this year. Um, it's my understanding with all three things, they want they to want push this on the websites and stuff. So, if we can get Cleveland County specifically on this, it would, it would help us more. Is there any, any of 
you know, code. As far as the, the no. funds, the chamber, we've set aside a budget for any additional the post or you know, labor would be free. I mean, you know, that would be a I actually got started on some of this before I, I touched base for I haven't actually touched base with me, but uh, I put him in contact with the guy from Auburn. I wanted to make this the red eye cap a little more. I mean there's a lot of people that don't understand that fish or whatever, but the, what better way than to educate? Right. So do you, would there be a problem of posting on it and put a sign up down there up on any place on the new trails? Okay. Anybody got it? <coughs> Y'all want to make any kind of resolution? I'm sorry, do a resolution and support it. Okay, all right. Can we put this on these business so we can read it out loud and stuff? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We do that? And sure. Do we need to be back next week? Uh, uh, if you want to come back and whatever, we'll just do a resolution support. You have to put it on new business so we can read it aloud. Right. Uh, in the paper. I, I, I don't know what made it. Yeah. It's an off the beat. I think we did. And if you got any. that resolution on our page. Sorry. We, we have a place to post that resolution. You know, it's right here. I don't know who the celebrity can be back. And I've got places to be. Y'all can have it. Post it on the screen on our screen. Okay. But I'm going to put you a plug in the notes on my Facebook. I'm actually doing Facebook anything with my outdoor coach. Okay. And I'll highlight it. I need to get on. 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 Okay. I'm watching all the time. <laughs> please do. You know, most people follow my, my private page, but please go to Tim Perkins Fisher and hit the follow button. And uh, we're putting this place on the map slowly, but sure. <laughs> it's got a lot of like a bunch of kids. I mean, it's the gold mine thing, the things we have. Let me, one, there's something else I'm going to go over real quick. This is a flyer about the Lanai guys, cheaper by 100 run. All right. Y'all know about the Pin Hilly 100. It goes from Pine Lane to Silicon Valley. They invest in this, not the same people, but the same division or same classification of the run. This guy, this person here is starting this run on the Lendaga Road Trail from Jacksonville to Rockmore and back. He's on good May 20th to 21st. We've got the basic, actually two or three different runs. How many days? Excuse me. He thinks he'll have he'll be both up over 200. Might be a good idea if I can get with Tracy. Uh -huh. And the sheriff. And the sheriff on this. Right. Well, and, 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 and that's what I want to ask you about, too. Is I, same thing with this uh, is that this is going to go at no cost to, to the county. Now, and of course, we know that the prettiest part of the road trail is in Cleaver County. So um, I would like to have uh, maybe, I guess, another resolution that one of the eight stations is going to be uh, close to the Chief Adaga Camp. I'm not at it, but real close to it. You go past the 24 stores a little way there. Charlie Fagan has a home on the right, and that's right there. He rents that out. That's where A Station comes in. That's off 94. Yeah. And so, what I would like, again, this guy, he's all the advertising, the logos, t shirts, all that stuff. I would like the blessing of the, of the Cleveland County Commission. I don't know if I'll say anything. That, that when this run takes place and they hand out the shirts and all that stuff, the Cleveland County Commission is helping the sponsor. Again, at no cost. And so I didn't know if that would be. It's a beautiful area. Too. Yeah. There's so many people who don't even know it exists. Right. So what is that? That's look on your flyer. That's that's that. Uh, that's the other flyer. Well, we work with we work with the station for the. Okay, we got plenty of time. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The last one. There's people from Brazil, um, Africa, Mexico, Mexico, Ukraine, Mexico. So that's the crazy thing about yeah. this place. And, they, and yeah. it's not just the runners, they bring five people or six people with them. Or team. Yeah, right. right. Mm -hmm. so it's the same scenario. But it's, it is the first time they can start at Jacksonville on the drill trail rock mark turnaround. Can you imagine running 100 miles in 13 hours? It's crazy. But anyway, people do it. Hundreds. I think right around 100 miles in 13 hours. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so what I like But also, what I like, if, if, and I mentioned this to run, if if I can have permission or somehow be helpful on the road trail, we parked at 49. If I could have permission that day or whatever, or, or to, if I had to drive on that for some, some type of help, would that be possible? I'm just throwing that idea out to y'all. Well, if it's a 
You mean if somebody had to go pick somebody up or something? Right. Or if there's something they needed, something that I could have permission at 49 to drive at that, that station. The, the Cleveland County Station is there at the campground or close to it. If I could have permission, if, if I needed to, if I needed to somehow, I have permission to take my truck on that rail trail. If I don't think you'd have a problem. You can take more of my little Kubota. Okay. Okay. Or just somehow they, they use it in case of emergency, especially in bad weather. They yeah. have to use that's yeah. the only way they can get over there because yeah. they can't go over the mountain in bad weather. Right. That's what I was talking about. It's gonna support people. It's not like yeah, it's not like I know people that have actually ridden on the road on the road anyway. Yeah. 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 And I'm I'm mixing here just like the sheriff knows. Yeah. So yeah. The yeah. deputy knows it. Might be going up somewhere in the fire department. When they have the bike right through mm -hmm. there, they usually get volunteers, and they have in the past, like uh, Blue Springs, they'll set their station there. Oh, yeah, I already been talking to them about it. And uh, the only station is going to be one of the state line, the other one is going to be right there at the rail, at, at, the, at the campground. And, and I told them that I could get volunteers. I mean, I'm not asking y'all, but I know, I know all I know the people. In the county and, and surrounding it, we'd like to have that. Yeah. But I just want to know if we do we need a resolution at, at the next business meeting about supporting this? Would that be okay? Yeah, I want to end this in each basis? Yeah. yeah. That is a beautiful area. It is. We can do it all. We can do it all. I'll go through the fuck out first. Uh, yes. The county side there. I need them back and actually do the presentation Saturday.
Well, thank y'all. Get them. Keep us out of it. Y'all can stand in the garden. Brian, man, we're keeping people out. <laughs> thank y'all. Uh, I just don't want to be pushing it. Hey, I, I was going to get a selfie with you, but I'll wait. There you go. <laughs> Next time I'll be here. Okay. Matt, Mr. Elbert, come on up. Ebert, Elbert, whatever. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Y'all, I think everybody remembers Matt, except maybe Mr. Hill. I don't know if you met Mr. No, Matt Elbert, PPM. PPM is a company that is, does the cleanup over at the, uh, at the county bar that we, we've been involved with for the last several years, but it's been so quiet and I've done such a good job. So. But he gives us an update in case. Go ahead, sir. Well, first of all, well, I'd like to have you here. I apologize for the whole thing. We've worked at Sissel randomly and he said, come on over. I'm here. So I don't have a lot of notes with me, but I, have, I can answer as much as I can for you. Uh, give you a quick update. Uh, this is through August of this year, or last year, I think. Uh, through August, so far we spent $831,000 through the trust fund. If you remember, we have a $1.75 million cap on that trust fund. And right now, we're spending about $135,000 a year. Uh, we're trying to work that down, but uh, it was higher than that before. We have a little bit of that $135 right now. It should be down a little lower after this, too. Uh, the two systems uh, each have a run time between 70 and 73 percent, which is pretty typical for the whole systems. They are getting older, as you guys know. Uh, they're five, six years old now. So um, we have been replacing a lot of components on it lately. Little thing that's what I've been out here this week for. Um, but we're keeping them up as best we can. A lot of the time they go down, it's just we're getting some weird power glitches. Don't know what's going on, but all systems be down with no arms. It's just they're very finicky on power. If there's any little dip in the power, they shut down. So, uh, but we're trying to get that run time up. Like I said, 73, 70 percent is pretty typical for these systems. Uh, the North system or the two systems combined pulled out of 19 or over 19,000 gallons of gasoline, and that's just in the dissolve phase and the vapor phase that we pulled out. There's actually three pipes that we pulled out early on. I don't have that many wooden. I'm going to say it's about two to three thousand gallons, I remember. And that was just pure gasoline. This is, as the systems are vacuuming out, we take concentrations, flow rates, and we calculate the equivalent gallons of gasoline that come out. And like I said, right now, that's about 19,000. And that's through the end of August. Uh, the two systems combined have pulled out about 5.6 million gallons of groundwater. Created our water discharge. Uh, we've not had any pre prop at the site now. Pre prop once again is pre phase gasoline. We've not had that out there for I think two, three years now. So that's fantastic. You know, before we had quite a bit out there, things you know, leave the site. And we've pulled that back. And I think everything we're working on now is the dissolved phase. So we do have dissolved phase in the groundwater. We discuss that a lot. The numbers are still pretty strong in the groundwater, but it's more just under the county yard and not down the lower area. The lower area is a lot lower concentrations, higher concentrations up there in the shop yard. But uh, we are working hard to get that out of the ground, and the systems are running. We're going to modify the south system, start pulling from the north side pretty soon, and that way we can focus both systems on that upper area, the source area. Uh, like I said, the south system has done a good job keeping that thing the property. But now we're ready to start pulling back up to the source area. So, so that's a quick update. If you got any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer So you, you, are you going to be pipe? Are you planning on moving more pipe up there into the north end of it? Yeah, what we'll do is we'll run one pipe from that south system well, all the way to the north one. And we've got a series of two different manholes up there. Right. We'll hook that pipe from the southern system up to one of those manifolds. And that way, the north system can run one set of manifolds, and that manifold had maybe 15 wells on it. The other one would be about nine wells, and we can, right now, I'm having a bounce around in two weeks. I hit anywhere from three to six wells at a time. 
And then after two weeks, we moved to another section with that cement cutter. This way, I can just be hitting both of these really hard. You got an ending there? I wish I did, but I do not. Uh, I mean, with the figures you just put out there roughly in my head, so we're looking at seven more years of money. Yes, sir. Uh, like I said, the hardest part was getting up. Like, a lot of the effort went to getting the actual pre product out of the ground. Now it's getting the dissolved phase. It's all, it's all phases where it gets tough. And just to be honest with you, it's, you, know, you spill gas in the asphalt, you can soak up a lot of that real quick, but then you don't have that sheen up that asphalt. You, you pour water on it, pour water, it's going sheen up quite a bit. It's, the problem is we've got this all phase now that's in the pores of uh, Oxford out there and try and get that out. And what we try to do is we try and dewater and let the air go across it and that's what strips off all the volatiles. So we're trying the best we can. We're trying to, if I put that cellar system up, but when I do, we should be able to put that hard enough. But, you know, right now I want to say our benzene concentration in the upper area is around 10 parts per million. So we've got to get that around 1. So, okay, so when it gets to 1, then we're cleaned up. It, it, there's different numbers for different areas of the site, too, sir. We can get that, those numbers down. And What's the numbers in the south end? The south end, I think we're down around 0.5. But down there, we've got a different number. What we've got for our cleanup numbers, there's two, well, three components to it. One is you've got protection of human health environment, or human health. I mean, someone's going to fill it. something over that. Area, the papers come up, and you have indoor ventilation. We've gotten those numbers where that's not an issue. Uh, another set of numbers is what's called groundwater resource protection. And we calculate if you've got the source was the AST area, the above ground storage tanks. We model if someone did a well 500 feet boundary of your property boundary, that well has to meet drinking water. So we model how groundwater moves down to there and where you can have different concentrations going back upstream. And it's all through ADEM's program. They have a program called A Rebecca Alabama Risk Based Corrective Action Evaluation. They go on word meaning we just have that some numbers. Uh, the other set of numbers is for stream protection. You know, we've got that ditch down there, we've got to make sure the water going to the ditch is fine too. And those are even more conservative than the drinking water. So, we've, like I said, we've got the risk for the indoor regulation that's gone. Now it's just concentrating on getting the groundwater resources and the stream protection numbers where everything's set. And these numbers, these models are very, very conservative. So, that, the, the Thunderous Well is on the other side of where Matt Creature's property, I think, you know, the problem is. Yes, and that one's been clean. That one's clean. That one's clean. All of our perimeter wells are clean. And that's the data. Yes, sir. None of that. We may have so, um, so, we may so, have a little bit of NTP, like when I say, a little bit we're talking about. And when we, when we were digging that up up there, you know where that building is that's where they just to open the video, the ball bar? Right, yes, sir. Uh, you know, that's, we get a lot of product right there, yes, sir. you remember. Uh, what, is, what are we getting right in there? Because we've got the whale there, we've got the line of whales. Let me pull up there. It sounds like we're on the prop, it sounds like we're on. You just about got us on our property, is what I'm saying. Yes, sir. Like, like I said, the benzene numbers are the, all our perimeter wells are clean except for a little bit of MTPE, which is well below drinking water standards. So we're not worried about that. It's fairly thickful. Uh, okay. In the heart of the plume, in the April event, April groundwater sample, the August one, just give you a heads up on that. Uh, we ship the samples off, they get out of the lab, Hurricane Ida hit, the lab lost power, all the samples got out of temperature so they were not analyzed. Aiden was aware of that, that said no problem, and we just resample and I've got okay, this also back up and have it unfortunately. That report's still on drive, so I don't have that. So I'm going with the able date here. Uh, Visiting concentrations up by the ASTs was 3.9. Uh, in the middle was 1.5 and 1.3. There's a recovery well actually down in that low area. Mm -hmm. And that was a, right now, right in April, it's 0.031. So very low. And then the deepest 
He's on the further south. Well, it's not in Right. Uh, so, so as we get up to the fence line, not the last fence line that we put up on the other people's property, mm -hmm. uh, what was it, Diamond's property due or something like that? The original fence, how much was it? Nine. Yeah. At the original fence that we cut down where that last year, that, the, the south unit is, on that old fence line, and we're at a point where we will be on on the upper side of that fence for those whales. I mean, we can still test them, but are we, are we in a situation where we put some, uh, we put some uh, in ground. Yeah, I've got recovery troops down That's right, down there on that problem. Yeah, I've got recovery wells up on the site. And we're only sampling four recovery wells each triangle period now to save cost. A lot of times they have almost every one done, but that 21 wells that would be adding to it at probably $200 a well. So, I've been able to convince them we don't need that right now. As long as our printer wells are clean, we're we'll concentrating on cleaning up the middle. Once I start getting the numbers down, then we will have to start sampling the other wells to burn the low areas of clean too. But right now, to save money, I'm just limiting the number of samples in the part of the loop because I know it's already hot. There's no point in getting more data at this point, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so with uh, 0.5, below the fence line is what you're telling me. Yeah, let me pull up the tables here. And I can give you what the correct measurements are for those. What I'm trying to get to is, is if we got a area that is clear, can we not, I mean, we can still go and sample those places, but if, if they come up clear, then we can, Maybe look at moving or putting our fence back on our property. And, and, and yeah, I mean, the fence can go up right now as long as we put a gate where we get down to that other area. We still we want to keep that area down there and close. Yeah, you know, we've got trends of weeding. The enclosed part is kind of up to you guys. I personally prefer to be enclosed if it's not bothering anybody. It's just, not. I just want to. Yeah. And we've got wells over there. We've got, we've put everything in the ground now. We had all the piping above ground. There was one rain. Maybe it's going to take some less than the free park on the surface. That is gone. The piping is in the ground. But we do have wells all through there. Okay. And it's just a better idea to keep kids no, out of there. Keep the fans up going. Yeah. That's my recommendation. Okay. Uh, so, the furthest south recovery well that's down in that low area. Like I said, our benzene concentrations have ranged recently from 0.22 down to 0 0.031. We have to get down to 0 0.0136 in that area. So we're close, but it's still. Moving. That's down in the lowest part of that's the That's the lowest part. That's why I want to start getting more focus on the north area. Right. So at that point, when you move to the north area, we're going to shut off the most. Wait, we're not going to go I'll You're going back and forth. I'll be going back and forth. So you just going to run up one, one pipe off the end of the pipe, the, the manifold. Yeah, manifold. Yeah, right now, yeah. the pipe, I've got a southern manifold, I've got two northern manifolds. Right. I'm going to connect both the southern manifold with one of the northern ones. That way I can kind of manage, pull from the source area, but also keep that lower area maintained. But I want to turn it off if you're going to keep going by it. Right. The issue number four. Right. I don't have to hit that south area as hard as I have been in the past. Okay. I got it. So, so I'm trying to see if, if, if we're going to start pulling straight from the north end for what I was saying. But I need to keep it. I can go back to the north end. Most of the other but I still have to you know, slip on some of this other stuff. Okay. So, like I said, the benzene up around the former ASTs with uh, benzene concentrations in the last year or two have ranged from 1.8 to 4.4. And I've got to get down to 0.4. So it's getting there, it's just this going to take time. Mm -hmm. And the total benzene of uh, BTEX, that's where we have higher numbers, but I don't have any clean up numbers that per se. But the benzene is what drives everything typically. And that's what we're trying to focus on. I know this is a long way down the road, but at some point, will they then give us a paper to say that we did? That's a whole goal. Is that we get this thing done, we get rid of the systems, we clean all the wells, and it's just the letters and no further action. We're still looking at six, seven years away. Maybe. I'm hoping it's not going to be six, seven years, but it's not, I know it's not a year or two. Yeah. But if I, I'm trying to get 
So how much of those sheet machines are running now? Are you saying we, we're going to be able to get another seven years out of them? I'm, I'm going to try my best to get seven years out of them. Because the one we've got is going to be seven years old, but the used ones were not. Yeah, now, but that one had sat around for a while. So these, as long as we keep them going, keep them. It's when they sit around. They, well, they may have been sitting, so we've been on that. You don't know what's <laughs> it's freezing and all that stuff, and you're going to mess them up. Because how much is the light bill running now? Light bills are down quite a bit, I know that. Well, oh, I know that most of them are. We don't have the outsizers out there anymore. And have you just dismantled them, or do you still keep them on the other still on there? Uh, we've got one outsizer still down there in case we need it, but it's more just sitting out there. Uh, we're not required to have carbon anymore. A and has said we don't have to have carbon. Or you had it connected to the door system. I just leave it connected just is a good safety thing. Right. But it's not required uh, by A. South system is not in carbon anymore. Once again, it's not full of strong breakers. So. We didn't know the hawks about it. We were releasing those. Those were released, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had two oxides going and both of those are going now. See if I can. <laughs> See the power bill for that April or January for April was uh, about fifteen thousand dollars a year. No, that was for four months. Okay. I know it's still high. Yeah. So we had some tree out there. Got to talk. We had some issues with it, and the phone company out here was starting to raise some amount. Three hundred dollars a month. This is a have phone. We just disconnected that and kind of saves money there. So yeah. um, we appreciate what you've done. We well, love you. Thank you a lot. Of money. Well, I'm trying my best, and we want to see what we do. We'll write you a letter. Well, I want. <laughs> I appreciate it. So, we appreciate it. Any other questions? Uh, I know you're new to all this, so if you have any questions, I'll be glad to. Yeah, you catch me up. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you. We got Mike. What's your name? Yes. I'm going to let Mike. <clears throat> Mike, can you hear me?
his four ways that he they deserve credit. Absolutely. Um, you know, even if they didn't miss three weeks, I mean, you're paying for a right. service. Yeah, and they right. should, you know, and that that was another issue my people were, in my district, were complaining about was that they missed and they weren't being credited. Well, the men miss like that. They miss one day and then come back the next. Uh, I can credit on it. We miss a whole <coughs> hour and we should have been credited. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And usually I'll. Uh, I talk tomorrow, and we get some of these handled, but then there's some that, you know. Um, and Mike, along those same lines, the there's a pattern, and this is just one of the things I can't, I guess I need to listen. But we have, call it hot spots. Now there's sporadic throughout the camp, but then, for instance, Abernathy, there's a spot right over there, just north and south of the interstate, that they just don't get service. They'll go, they'll go three weeks and it get picked up, and they may go four weeks and it gets picked up, and they may go another three weeks. It, it just that is one spot that we continue to have trouble. And when you call and check on it, the cans are marked as picked up. So I don't know if the drivers, they're obviously not, because it'll be it ain't, it ain't just one or two here or there. It's whole roads. But that's one thing that I want us to. Focus on, you know. I understand here or there we missed one here and there, but when we got spots like that, that it's just over and over. Why can't we? That's what what is the problem in that area? Why can't well, we? That's something. If you would communicate that to me, email me, just let me know on these things so I can follow up on it. Okay. Um, and I will make sure that it's corrected. Yeah. Um, now I'm not doing an investigation on it, so I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. But just off the top of my head and my experience. What has happened, we put what we call OB unions in all these trucks, all more computers. So when they come to an, uh, an account, a resident, say it's a one, two, three main street, and it comes up on the computer, they're supposed to service that they have one car. Well, when they service the car, they have to push a button that says accounts that are resident service. Um, and it has other options such as no can out or whatever. So you mark it, but it dates and time stamps when it was served. So that is where the customer service center is saying it was served. What has happened is we were not having it. either a consistent driver or a driver is not well trained <coughs> or he's not he's probably not well trained. Uh, but because he's the new to him. Okay? And what they've done, they're going through a neighborhood and they service <coughs> service and they have to get the market everything. So they're stopping at one place you know, quick punch and everything. And so they did like half the route. So it shows that it was picked up when they actually won. They missed it. And that's a training issue. That's something we're working through. And we have a lot of those and they'll call and they'll call the service center and they'll say, well, you, you may pick up. No, I'm looking. My garbage is full. It's been full for three weeks. You know, and it's a... Uh, and usually yeah. I call Mark and they get they go back out there and they service it. Right. But when you call the center, you're being transferred to two or three different people and it doesn't work. And once they make that call and they see if their guard team is still full, we get a call and it's usually not a happy call. Sure. And usually what I'm saying about waiting in the so, the, the customer service line just is is the customer service line is the biggest problem. Because it's not, it's not, it's not correct information, and we hear it all the time. Um, we're, we're well, I call the 800 number, and this is what they told me, and I, and, and me sitting there, I know, I said, look, I know that's what they told you. I know what's happening here. So here's where we're at, and that, you know, going back to having that local single contact, I think would help with that. Mm -hmm. or, or some somebody somehow or another, that information got to be the same when you got when you got. The field information is different than that call center information. That's where majority of the of the arguments come from. Well, the, the information that anybody would have would come off our system. So somebody's sitting in the desk and help them, and they're looking at our system. That's what they're going to see. The same thing that a customer call uh, rep would uh, in the end of the city. That's what they're going to see. Um, now, as far as 
speaking to the manager, there's no way that every resident could call and talk to a manager right. because, in other words, if he didn't do nothing, manager phone calls like that. We would manage and um, But when, when it's the same driver more than once, does that driver get reprimanded? Absolutely. Yeah. But the thing of this is, we're in that situation. They do get reprimanded, but the guys, uh, kind of guys in a way, I guess you can say, is a. Uh, you can't recommend to get rid of You fire somebody, but what are you doing? Yeah. Um, because you, you, you don't have anybody to backfill the seat, and trying to find somebody to backfill the seat is, you just, you know, hopeless all us. But that's the reason we have a contract with you. For you to handle it. Yeah, absolutely right. And that's what we're dealing with. I mean, the cost has not been an issue whatsoever. We're spending every time, every dollar you think of trying to get people. I mean, I, 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 for example, right now, you know, our, our standard used to be 21 years old. We've lowered our standard to a, a requirement to 18. If you're 18 years old, you have CDL, you can pass a, um, a drug test, background check. You can come in at 18 years old and make $81,000 a year your first year. You'll work scouts with you. I never mean, work in scouts with you. See? Yeah. But you'll make $81,000 your very first year of work at 18 years old. Uh, you know, so we're not, we're not holding back. I promise you that. We're doing everything we can. We, we understand your issues with employees because we, we have the same time. We have a hard time getting the employees. Entertain the employees, but when you get 10 calls a day, yes. and, and you know, it's somebody say, but you know, it's I understand. I understand. And usually, the way mine happens is I'll go for six or eight weeks and we'll get one phone call, and then within a two or three day period, just like that little triangle that, that Lee was talking about, half the people on the road just call me, and they're not happy when they're calling me. Because they've done it live to you. Oh, we picked up your garbage. It says right here. Well, no, I'm not trying to can't right there. So, you know, it, it's, I mean, I know it's not your fault, but we got a little better. You know? Yeah, absolutely. That's why that Mountain Creek Road, they haven't got any three weeks. And that's where I go back to just the cost of information. If, if, if when they called 800 number, they said, yep, yeah, we picked up your garbage in three weeks. That would be a better answer to tell them that they have when they look out the window and they say, yeah, we've got that. Well, you know, that's how that's just, I'm going to call the customer service manager when they get out of here. That's, that's just, and they say that we need to stop that. From an anger, from an anger, citizen anger standpoint, <coughs> that's where the majority of it comes from, is calling that, calling that customer service manager and waiting for an hour to be told their garbage got picked up when they look out the window and see that. It, and it's a, a retired gentleman, <coughs> they got nothing else to do. But to see when his can is picked up out there, and he's automatically mad. And he wants to call somebody up. Well, I mean, the expectations. The customer service, some of them can be very rude, you know. And it's like they forget that they they can be in that same place, just a little bit of courtesy, saying, "Well, I'm sorry, you know, we're going to have to check into it." But, yes, sir. But they're very rude. Some of them are. If any of you ever get a call from a resident for a customer service uh, rep was rude, please let me know immediately because we, we record every single call and I can, we'll backtrack and we'll find that person and use it for training then or a bit later. Mm -hmm. So what are you, what are you going to have, a day and a time or just a day or? Just a, pretty much a day. Okay. I mean, I really haven't had a day and a day. I haven't really had a whole lot of calls about people being rude. It's just they think they've been lying to me. Yeah. I understand that. That's why we've got to stop telling the, the resident that, yeah, you would pick up. They can see it. I mean, that's just uh, that's the train we'll, we'll fix that. We'll support you any way we can. Thank you. We do have a contract, and we just want to be happy. She's been in the car. Mark does it, the exception yeah. job that does, and when I call him, you know, usually 
who become or like the chamber who become or different officials or folks who are doing this stuff. Um, and y'all know that I, I want to be nice to everybody. I don't want to be unfriendly with everybody. I just want to make sure that everybody has an opportunity. But when we get into the tightness, when everybody's going to talk about the same thing on, on a tough issue or something, then we ask you to come to the commission meeting and speak, you know, roughly between three and five minutes. Just want y'all be aware of that. But I know we have this young lady here who wants to speak about dogs or some problems that's going on, and I think she's your, your guest, right? She's the Jordan district. And I don't mind her speaking, but I want us to realize that we do have, you know, we try to skip something because I don't want to be unfair to Mr. Flanders or to Mark Truitt or somebody who just comes and wants to speak. So, and, and of course, I just want to talk about that. I'm not going to be ugly, but I just want us to talk about it. Uh, how you want to handle that because you're trying, you know, you go a certain way it's for a period of time, time and set kind of a rule or procedures and then you kind of change from it. Uh, Lee got to contact me about these folks, these leaders that need to come today, and they're necessary. They, they're not, they're coming to teach you and inform you of what's going on. Um, and uh, so I just want you to be aware. I'm okay with her coming to, to speak. And I don't mean me or with you, deal with you, but if you want, want to you want to let her speak, is the commission okay with that? Let her speak for just a few minutes. Everybody okay with that? If you want to come speak, it will ask you to keep it brief. I understand. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail. I just want to speak and say, I live in Clinton County. I live in Fort Worth Elementary. I'm at Fort Worth, Alabama. And there is no Are law. You? Can I ask you one question to start with? Okay. So we say where you live at. You live in Fruithurst City Limits. Fruithurst and Alabama County. Okay. And we, you live outside the city limits? I live in the county. But you don't live in the city limits? No, 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 no. no. Okay. I do not. I think that's important because yeah. he... Yes. Um, there is no law against other animals coming onto other people's properties and causing damage to their animals or causing damage to a person or a child or their property. My, my child has been bit by a dog and I've had three animals die because of other people's dogs coming on my property and killing my animals who are chained up. I don't agree with that. I agree that there needs to be at least something that the laws can do to protect my animals and protect my property and my children. I've done shot these animals, it's not working. I've done tried to tell, I've got text messages, videos, trying to tell these owners to chain their dogs up or to put their dogs up and they're not going to. I've done called police, the police can't do anything because there's no law. They're telling me to just shoot the animals. I'm an animal lover. Regardless if it's aggressive or not, I can't shoot an animal, I, I just can't. It's not in my nature. But I pushed my limit. I went and bought a gun. And I shot the animal the other day. Shot it in the butt. But it came back on my property again. And it's every day. It's an everyday thing. Constantly. All day. Every day. And I can't, I can't keep calling the police constantly. Because they're going to say, well, you know, we can't do nothing about it. So it's either we shoot these animals and kill them dead. Or me be dead or one of my children. Are the, the, people, the dog that's coming on your property, right, are, there, are there an owner that says it's their dog? Yes. Well, at that point, if they're damaging your property, you can, do, you can take them to court. I don't know if you would go to a small claims court. I have. I did that too. And they said that I can't do anything. Uh, they killed my cat on Christmas Day, my kitten. And it only lived for an hour, didn't even have time to get it to a vet. They were ripped. six animals were ripping my cat my heart. So when they say, did you go to court? I went to the court to try to do a um a um you tried to file a with a certain clerk like mm -hmm. small claims. And, and they, they said that they I would have to do a value of my cat, and I don't know the value of a cat. I've never had to deal with none of that. That's all they could do. Um, then she told me to call the commissioner, talk to Ms. Cobb about it, and I did. And but it's it's 
it's not just my property or my children or my my animals being attacked. It's other animals, I mean, uh, other animals on other people's property that lives in my community that's dealing with these animals, and there's nothing no one will do about it. And I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm at my end road. What's your end road? 835 20 for Alabama. And we do, on the same thing government, uh, which will be coming back up in our meeting a little later and all, but that does give us some of that, but there's still a process we'll have to go through with it. But, I, you know, I feel like our hands, we're going to have to do something. To, to create a law, well, that's got to go to the we can create a law. You still have a son of a that second Yeah, you do. This is the law, and all of them are going to get arrested. All of them. All of them. Is that what you said, 835? 835, I'm going to be right behind for the first elementary school. I don't know what you're talking about. You're not inside the state. No, sir, I'm just I'm just I'm just scared for my children and for my animals. And I know they're these people, they chained up their dog after New Year's. It was a rock baller. And they chained up the dog. I've got pictures. That rock baller is huge and very aggressive. He's put me in the car twice. <laughs> They chained him up, but then you know, he's got to put him in the car one time. He's going to like it when I get in Exactly. <laughs> they, they him the you, you out. I'm an animal lover, too. Well, well, they put him on the chain. But I love myself. But then they always got off the chain. I'm not going to my truck to get He's not a smart dog. And then there's pits, that dog. Right by, there's pits that live right behind me. This lady, she has five gifts that are adults. And she has six are seven puppies from one one adult dog, and then she just had a litter of puppies from another adult dog, and has another adult dog that's going to give birth to more puppies. And I've been told that this lady won't do nothing about it either. This lady is, I'm just being honest, she's crackhead. She has no power. <laughs> she has no power. She has nothing, and she has animals. And that's that's my thing is if you can't take care of your animals or you can't put them up on a leash or whatever. Something needs to be. Well, that's all close to the school, too. Yes. My okay. children are afraid to go outside. Um, basically, the commission is looking at, and they had this self governing act, and which would give them a little more opportunity to pass some procedures that, that might curb this activity, which might be like a lease law or something like that. However, it was voted on back in 2018, it failed. It did not pass. They're looking at adding this again. I think we failed to get on the agenda last month. Their intention was to get it. It was just one of those human errors that didn't make it back on. <clears throat> but if they pass that, it's going to be in the general election. Of course, that's next November. Okay. And then after that, then you'll have to go through a whole process of developing what you want to do. So it's not going to be an overnight. You know, well, I'm that. just scared of doing something to these animals and them prosecuting me for taking matters into my own hands and protecting me and my family and my and my property and my animals. My animals are like my community, are, are like my, my children. I've had them since they were babies, and then three of them are already dead. I, that and my kids had to see their kitten die on you on on Christmas Eve. That's just that's just wrong. You might want to go by the sheriff's office and talk to somebody out there because I think there is an Alabama law that if they're destroying your property or, or threatening you by the harm, you can legally kill them. Well, I have. I did Deputy Sims. I talked to Deputy Sims three times. Well, twice. And he told me that I have legal grounds to shoot the dog if the dog comes on my property. But heck, if that dog is charging at me, how am I going to pull a gun and shoot that dog if that dog is too close to me? That dog's not already being attacked. I can get you a class if you want. Do what? I can get you a couple of class if you want. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do need them. <laughs> Best I can do is a good shotgun with some triple ball bucks. I better get them out there. Well, I have a pellet gun. Oh, well. Okay. And you pellet, don't want to shoot no rock ball with a pellet gun. The pellet gun actually shot, I shot it and it hurt that. It did? Dog. 
first, but you come back again, so. I thought for us, we shoot something where you six tons and a little more than. So basically, right now, the commission, you, we don't have a solution for you. Okay. Um, other than the self governing act might be an answer in the future that might curb some of this activity. However, I do believe you could take folks to court if you if if you can, like you said, put a price on some sort of something that's damaged. Um, and I don't know the price of a kid. Well, I, I know, I, know that. <laughs> I, I understand that, but but there are other things that have price, and then what? you might you you know you, eventually you might think what the kid might be worth to you. You said you had three animals. I had three animals die. From uh, yeah, I, well, I how much kid, my, the first one was a kitten. The second one was my daughter. She he was uh, less than six months old. He was, was going to be. He was no. He yes. He was allowed, yeah. and he was going to be uh, my daughter's service dog. And That's a ten thousand dollar dog right there. Yeah, yeah. And then my kitten. When you walk in there and they kill your service dog, and they take an ownership. Well, I didn't. I didn't service it yet. I was in the process of servicing the animal when he died. I wasn't able to do this six months to get him. He's got to be six months or older to service him. And he died in less than six months. I, I mean, you know, for sure. 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 It's still a process, like Ryan said, to go through. It's something that's not going to happen overnight. Right. I'm still going to have to deal with all these battles. We, we, we understand. We understand and have compassion. I understand. I'm um, talking about to go by and call up with Sonny Martin. He's got those same shot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're real. I mean, it's a 44, but you can also put a 410 in it. Uh, you can put birdshot in it. You can also get uh, that. Uh, you, 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 I mean, that pellet gun is not going to. But you can put rat shot in there, and I guarantee you, you take that, that 44 and put that rat shot in it, it's not going to kill the dog. I guarantee you, it's going to. That pellet gun, you just, on the rock wall, you just wasted your pellet. I know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
Um, the next thing is how um, okay. the next thing would probably also be concern agenda item. Um, I know we've all talked about this before about me having that county credit card and we went through the whole deal of it can only be in the administrator's hand and nobody else is supposed to have it. Have any control over the car, it can only be one car, it can't be spread out among several employees. After we had found all that out, which we found that out from the ACCA, we have not clear, clearly put that in a resolution, so we need that, the bank needs that to go forward with. Okay. So, we need a resolution ready for that. Everybody give a consent? For one credit card? Yes, for, the, for booking hotel rooms, that kind of thing. Okay, um, let's see. Um, Mike Copeland wanted to mention that um, they are in the middle of the CBG project. They, it looks at this point like they will have money left over, which you typically do if you overestimate intentionally to make sure you have enough to cover your project. They will, if they have money left, like they think they're going to try to amend their CBG project and add a little bit of the work that we've got ARPA money kind of set aside for. But we know that there's more projects than there is ARPA money, so if anything, it will help get some more of those projects done. But he just wanted me to mention it to you, but that's something he's looking into right now, and it'll have to be approved through ADECA, but it's something he's looking into. And there's no resolution, I just wanted to give you an update on that. Okay, okay I know we had some emails about the DHR appointment. Appointments. I don't know if there's anything you guys need to do about that. Share your bonds. That's what you're going to do that. That's fine. Okay, so I'll put that on the, the agenda also again. And then one more thing was um, using SSUT money, earmarking SSUT money to help with the pay study increase. Uh, I would like that resolution to say employee raises slash payroll. Because it's going to be more SSUT money than it takes to cover this actual deal here. I don't want to tie up all the money. So if it's pay increases slash payroll, I'll do that one. Yes. You run it by this. Okay. Do y'all you want to put down any business or consent? Any business. Okay. This is using internet tax to Right. And I don't, I don't, I raise this last we have not specifically said how much we want to use of the SSUT money. Is it just the amount and the difference between? No, that's what I'm saying. We want to use it all. Going forward. Going forward, yeah. Well, I mean, what we're doing, what we're doing starting in April, we had $18,574 that changed. It was already in the budget for the step raises. Right. So we can use that in the six months. It's going to cost about one hundred nineteen thousand. Not counting what we got to adjust and the lead accrual and stuff like that. So we'll have to have a, an adjustment to the budget. Sometimes we now do need to do that. But I'll let me take my next decision. Okay. Another one. It's still general fund. It's just kind of. It's still general fund. It's just kind of yeah. You're, you're working that money so that we got a legitimate reason for using it. Yeah, that's the word. Or it's time. So I'm sure here. I think that's why. Can that, my question is, can that money also be uh, earmarked for future projects? I mean, if you don't have a project right now, then it's... Well, we do. I mean, we still, like I said, we... We've still got a bridge on 94 that has not been completed that has already been on the books. We spent almost $90,000 on the project and we still haven't uh, finished the project. The last fiscal year, we, this SUT money was $322,000. This plan C is going to cost. Can any of that be earmarked towards that project each year until that oh. project? Let me, let me, I believe you can, but you gotta, you gotta get past. Mm -hmm. so. Well, that's what I'm asking. It, it, can it be done? Can it be a resolution to it that uh, part of that money is earmarked to finish that project? Are you wanting to make a resolution? Yes. New business? 
you the resolution mean? where it's the issue two funds. We know it's the bottom part of our funding, but I'm asking for some uh, part of that money to be earmarked to finish the bridge on 94 that has been an ongoing project for 12 years. Do you have some figures? The lady has not completed the figure when we at, at the when I went back and looked at the documents on it, at the time on the ATRA program, and it's six hundred and eighty thousand dollars on it. But that, that I do not believe that includes the twenty percent of matching funds. Um, and the lady was going to look into it to find out exactly how much that is, which is probably a two million dollar project. That's what the last estimate we had on it was two point eight, and you know so with. It's going to be north of that with, with inflation and stuff where it's at. Um, and, and keep in mind now, too, we don't have the whole 20% is not an option anymore. So we're going to have to, you, you have to have that entire amount because um, we don't have that. Right. Where are you going to have to return the money that was spent on it if it's not completed? Next year. And that's not even on the next year. 82,000. That's been spent on it so far. That and was how much is the A trip project? The last estimate we've done was 2.8, but that's been two years ago. How much, how much, I'm curious, how much money are we taking out of general fund money to, to pay for a bridge? What we have said, what do we took some money out of? Mm -hmm. How much is that? Mm -hmm. Out of general fund? Any other that we take out? That you're aware of. So, that doesn't entirely came out of the general fund. Well, and 71, so, okay. 71 was paid for with uh, was paid for with gas tax. Yeah, okay. okay. Okay, that's what I'm asking. But, but, but we, we haven't used any of the gas tax towards 94. That's good. The, the 82,000 82, that we're going to owe next year um, is the engineering is the engineering cost to do the to do the plans, and so the plans are before. Okay. Any? Yeah. So, what your suggestion is called is a resolution mm -hmm. to uh, take this tax money okay. and earmark it to your to project. To your market, because we're well, not actually. Right. That's what Mass yes. Terry will be use it to pay a paper. Pay yeah. Right. So, we're, we're if he's using it all for that, where's the money going to come from? Because this is the payroll's never going to stop. This bridge is never going to get done either if we don't make that effort towards it. But you're talking about making two point eight. I've been trying for 12 years to get this bridge. I understand, you're talking two point eight million dollars. I ain't trying to get an argument with you. Yeah. You're talking about taking two point eight million dollars, mm -hmm. basically from the general fund. From the SDA. Well, if you want to do that, I want my five, six hundred thousand dollars using my district. We're not going to take. I'm not going to be in favor of taking two point eight million out of the general fund. A piece of bridge that only runs 30 or 40 people on the north end of the county when we got all these other bridges that I mean I don't that don't make no sense to me. If you want to he's going to find out how to get out gas tax money because we're gonna continue to rob the general fund because everything goes to the road department when it comes to my district all at all. So well, now all the money You know, it's like, it's like if we'd have had Lee then, we'd have probably got a lot more money for our buck. 
But if you've got little small covers and stuff, we couldn't do a cover in the house. We can do a little $200,000 bridge that's right in the middle of the county that's really, I wish it had been a two line bridge. I think Terry and y'all have felt the same way, but I'm saying we're talking, when we're trying to push a $2.8 million bridge, you need to look on something where if, they, if we ever get anybody to run Washington, D.C. that sends us some money down or the state comes in, that's usually when that, that low hanging fruit when we can do stuff like that. But to try to put something together to take 2.8 out, we don't have 2.8. Um, this last infrastructure deal that got passed in Washington that was 1.9, we're supposed to get some of that. But, as far as what we're going to get and when we're going to get it, that's. So, the reason I'm saying that, because we're saying that, then what you can do is, 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 is we can look at, you know, what, you I'm saying, one of what I'm saying, every time I come up with a project, I had three projects last year, and three pro or two projects last year. My district got skipped completely over the year before that. I too work. They got skipped over. When is my district going to see any improvement? I've been in office for 12 years and I've been skipped over 10. Yeah, I'm just saying that I, <laughs> I want some kind of insight for that bridge on 90 Well, somewhere. Let me pull everybody back in. Before, you have a right to make a good resolution, mm -hmm. but it has to be voted on. You as a group has to fight the side as a whole. Okay? So if that's a resolution that you want, then you have the right yeah. to put that on there. But then we can vote on it. And I was just asking how much how, how much in the past have we taken out of general fund? I thought we took a little bit out on a few. We took we took out the um, we did take out part of the general fund. Oh I bet. The most the money that we took out was the reimbursement for the four hundred something thousand dollars, I think. Uh, four hundred fifty thousand dollars area for for the money when we had to go with that was thinking that. We did we did a couple of projects with that that I guess you could say come out of the general fund in the carryover because we had the COVID money and we had less COVID money. That's what that is. Yeah, it's only how much? Four hundred fifty thousand. And this project would cost what, two? Three million. It was probably three million. Probably three and out of the ramp project, that was that the only thing that didn't get finished? <clears throat> there were some other things that didn't get finished. There was, there was two of them ended up getting, there was the bridge up on 31 that we never did anything on either. But it was, was it one of the 12 bridges? It wasn't one of the 12 bridges on the ramp program. It was. But it, we, I went ahead and when, when we saw pretty pretty close up front that it wasn't going to have the funds to do it, we didn't spend any engineer funds on it. So it just. What was the plan on the ramp? What, you remember? Top to your head? Um, we didn't mind that. 18. Was the big one? Big one. All right, so so we've done. Let's go by districts right quick. Um, there was a culvert and part of County Road Ten got done in my district. That was so okay. We'll start there. So Terry had Terry had a culvert on nine streets, and then a portion of County Road Ten. Uh, Laura had four culverts on her on hers. They got completed, um, and then Roger had. Um, County Road 2, County Road 5, 118, and there's another one. Had four culverts, and County Road 24 and County Road 10 got resurfaced. It's where, where those went to. So there's nothing over here? Nothing over here. However, I know he was in the majority, but he still has some kind of. But, not, not but 18 was the, was the big. Cost. It was the biggest cost, right? The was the biggest cost. Oh, yes. I don't have a problem with money being spent that's designed that I know it's going to his department. When we start taking out the general fund, then I want some of that. Right. Okay. Yeah. But, but now she does have the right to put it on the. Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to yeah. say is we're talking We can't sustain a $3 million budget out of the general fund. Period. And I understand that, but I'm, what I'm asking is when that. The next money that comes down that we try to finish the project we've already got in place instead of jumping to another project, which we've done twice. You know, we went and did the bridge uh, out, uh, the single lane bridge, put money towards it, and then we finished the, then we put more money towards 10. And we still didn't finish a project we already had on the books. And, and 35 got put on the books and we completed. 
And how much is 35? And with the phased speed here with the gas next one, please. That's why I said 51, not 49 feet. Well, on 35, what is what do we want there? 35 is a research project that I can't remember the number, 600 and 600 something thousand dollars. That, that place up there we talked about in 94 is a beautiful place, one of the most beautiful places in the county. But the, the, the span across that creek, and I talked to you before, when I first came into office, that was brought to my attention. That was 21 years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, or even before I got into office, they were talking about that, getting that bridge refurbished. But you had two spans because you got a big uh, pier in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you can't use any state money unless it's going to be too late, right? And then you run into a big problem. Uh, that's going to be as much for that county road bridge as 18, probably. Which, I mean, both are county roads, yeah. but not near the traffic, right? Not the traffic count's not going to be the same ever. Yeah. I ain't going to say ever, but. Currently, it's not. Well, currently, it's a great job. I'm not a tourism in there, but then you've got all those houses that's been built over there. And, and if that other bridge goes out, they're isolated. Well, but that is a concern also, is being prepared if something happens to that bridge. Mm -hmm. And then... What does that other bridge look like? The other bridge is a single line truss bridge. It's got a 10 ton minimum on it. And at the moment, it's in pretty good shape. Um, I don't foresee having any issues with it. But can you forge the creek there? There, uh, it's on private property. There is a creek forge there. Um, and in past conversations, if something were called a contingency plan, if something were to happen to that bridge, we could do something similar to what we've done on CMB1 and in just a couple of months have it, have it up and back up. Um, but you're not looking at the same amount of span as where you're at and not on that. You're looking at 100 foot on that one as opposed to 208 foot on 94. I think it's 208 foot across that span. And I, I, I do understand. I, I, I was saying, I was looking for the single line, but you couldn't use federal funds to do the single line. And it would still cost I can, you. I can use, I can use the, federal, the gas tax money that we have now to, because that's what I used for saving the money. The 400,000 federal aid exchange fund uh, could be used for that to replace that single line if we ever were to go back. But that's basically two bridges. That's yeah. basically two bridges up there. I mean, it, you're not talking about the one that's down. No, I'm talking about the 10 tons. The well, I mean, who, who, who owns the property on each side of the bridge there, the, the existing bridge? The one that's active. Yeah, the one that's active. You have to go away, and if the river's up, you still can't cross it. Right. So, but if we had to, if we had to, we could, we could use the walking trail to get back around to Cabin County for those few months, but that would be a last, last resort. But the walking trail does circle back around to Cabin County on that side, so. And if you're coming up to it, you don't, you don't have 94 to replace, and something happens to that 10 ton, you could divert traffic for a couple of months. And, and but let me ask you this if we, if we touch that 10 ton, can we not make it a 20 ton bridge? There's nothing you're going to do to it as it is to make it 20 ton. That's what I'm saying, if you're going to rip it down. Oh, you yeah. know, if you go in there and tear it out and replace it, you put a full H20 rated bridge back in there with no, no way of trends whatsoever. And it still be a single. Like but it's still it's a line bridge. Okay. Because you raise it up at that point. I'm just saying if, if, yeah, if, if that bridge was left in if that bridge was left in place you just moved over <coughs> and built a bridge beside that bridge, right. say fifteen foot. See at that point you have to build new abutments and everything. Um, so you say you say that abutments that's there will handle a twenty ton bridge? Yeah. Yeah, the structure well, itself is what's is what's in And we can do it for as much as we did seventy one? It'd be the basically the same project you can But wait a minute now, that's two different bridges you're talking about. I'm talking about the little ten ton on the That's what I'm talking about. Yes. She's talking about one. I'm not talking about seventy four. No, I'm not ninety four. But they're still at ninety four. They're both they're both on there. Both on You're talking about the one that's out where the dogs live. Right. That's what's that's a two 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 spans right there. Mm -hmm. 
Right? That's in the large time. Yeah. Yes. But he's talking about he's talking about the single screen. I'm talking about, about the railroad bridge. Yes. It's what they call the railroad bridge. Yes. Well they're both old railroad bridges. They're all they're, they're all old railroad bridges. But they call that the railroad Okay. Bridge. All right, so back back to the point. Right now we just we got a resolution on e business for using internet chats trying to get market toward payroll payroll or pay raises. Pay raises slash payroll, that way he uses the dog. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. That's not gonna be anything left over. Okay. And you want a resolution? No. I you just want I want a point made that you ever it's just like we never we completely twelve years it, they've been looked over, they've been looked over. And we should come up with a solution to fix that breach on 9 to 4. It's one of our strongest tourism area, and it's beautiful up there. But it's just like, because nobody ever goes up there and looks at it, it doesn't exist to you. It is. It's a Bible. It was on the project 12 years ago, and we need to complete it. Some way, some way. Well, that is a beautiful place, but that, that road itself is so small and narrow, mm -hmm. too. You have to change for that road, but go ahead. I mean, to do it. Three million dollar project. It doesn't matter what it is. We would have to have federal and state help. There's no way we can kind of do a three million dollar project. Not with our budget. What I'm saying, if we get funded again, I don't want to get looked over again. Well, when we get that. We'll be glad to talk about it. Okay. You, I, you made your point, Scott. All right. You got anything else to add? You got anything? Uh, I got a few things to do. Okay. Um, I need a PO for us to talk about same line trust bridges. We have six of them that we're going to have to do the rope, rope access inspections. We do it every February. Um, Strain Tech is the contractor that we've used for the last couple of couple of years. They do a good job. I'm happy with them. $33,000 is the quote to do those seven. Um, seven bridges? Uh, six bridges, I'm sorry. Um, it's in my budget, but I just need to. Field, of course. Okay. Contingent good? Yes. Everybody okay with contingent? All right. And then I've got, uh, I'm going to be selling the motor graders in the March auction. I've got a few other just small odd and end pieces of equipment that I'd like to sell plus and uh, take down there all of less than less than $5,000 value on um, But one would be the little tar, stone tar machine that we bought. The, uh, Gray all. Um, then I've got a little rubber tire roll, and then I've got an F-150 shale. It's, it's just a transmission load in, the engine load in, it ain't no good. Um, but I like to just surplus those and get them off my lot. So. so you need a resolution on that? To surplus. Surplus. And you'll have? I've got that information. Okay. Continue with that, guys. <clears throat> Ms. Cobb? That's just more house. Sure. Okay. And then, as far as the gas tax money goes, Roger can just pass one down. I've got to give my quick report for the year. Um, so this document that you don't get is the document that's going to be legislated. So this is what they'll see. Um, <coughs> since 2019, uh, we have spent, we've invested uh, $1,573,961. That's got a 16 miles worth of road resurfaced and two bridges restored. And by the end of the year, by 2023, we would expect to add uh, or increase those numbers to 28 total miles that's been resurfaced and still have the two bridges that we have uh, restored. But so what's the time frame on this money you spent right here? So the money that we spent right here is since it was enacted in 19. Right, okay. So that's what we've done today, which most of this occurred, occurred last year, as you might see it on here all of a sudden. Um, and then the numbers at the bottom will be basically adding what we're going to be doing this year, too. So we're saying uh, this coming 23, what do you see at the 1.5? Well, that's one point, let's just say that's 1.5 million. We're spending about 1.2 this year. 1.2, and that's the money we're going to get. That's the money we're going to get. So the only way we're going to be able to do any $3 million projects is 
Uncle Sam or from the state. Yes. And he's up some money. Yes. Yeah. Any questions for Lee? Is this the part? Do you have the breakdown on all these projects? Yeah, I'm in the office. Do you know? I was something earlier. The property that we're talking about with the whales on it. I know we've talked about it in the past about acquiring that property. Does anybody want to pursue it? I mean, last time I brought it, anybody want to pursue it? You want to put it on the, I mean, a new business to purchase it? I mean, I think what, what, would you, what would you purchase it with, too? Mm -hmm. Think about that, too. Would you purchase it with general fund money or, or Yes, I'm just asking this company now. No, I'm just, I'm just sitting here and just... Just to think the property is not about the government, and it's probably not going to cost that much, but mm -hmm. I'm just like, maybe we could do that, I guess. Okay. It seems, it seems like at one point we asked Jason to look into the lien and that kind of information, but I don't know that he ever, I don't know that he ever come back to me trying to say who, who actually owned it or how much the lien was? Or I think it's only 33000 That's all it is. We had Doug look at it one time. Yeah. When I was talking before. Yeah, it may have been Doug and Jason. You want to pursue that? I mean, I've been on it for the last six years. Well, let's just look at, get him to look at it, see what it's going to cost, then we can decide we'll come back and look at it and purchase it. Well, the part we buy that we can. Once you add it to the uh, um, the resolution task yeah. Jason to do the study that we and y'all vote on it that you want him to do that as a whole. That sound good? Yeah, well, I'd like to see just well, to just say it. Just put that one in business. And yeah. it's right there where that driveway is, and all that was gone, and you could fix it. You could come off instead of having to go this way and that way. If it's a big, nice, you know, built a good car driver road, I would rather put the middle of that. Yeah, instead of having to go out, you know, down there at that lower end where you go out and crash for some time, that's just dangerous. That would be the best place to come out right there. You can take that whole hill of fishing right down in there. We carry this over to the, the gym and meeting, but that's pretty much what we brought past in a special meeting. So we need a way of getting rid of that. I don't know where we can just bring it up next week and nobody make a motion and let it die or. You, you know, I'm asking for you to figure out how to do it. This came up in the December meeting and it, it is yeah. carried over to the January meeting. It got paid with the little January Okay. But we actually did it in a special call meeting. We actually took care of it in a special call meeting, yes. Okay. I mean, we, we made us need to put it under our business and then just nobody make a motion and let it die or I think I think that's a, the guy I brought that up because I don't think I would hear that he's here. Here I ran the meeting. Now. Okay. And there's also another one in there for the February <coughs> the meeting. Okay. Well, I put this on old business. We also had one that got put off the table to the February meeting about the HVAC systems and we did we want to pursue trying to use some of the Okay, let's put those back on old business uh -huh. and then we can address it now from the side of the one. But uh -huh. well, we do know that one of those is being completed. Yes. And then we're going to have something on new business to um, ask the county attorney about looking at purchasing that nine in property okay. or paying off the lien.
come out real good because the guy that come up treated us real well. I think it was less than seven thousand dollars, and that's the first time I've ever seen it run, right, Fred? And it works fine. It didn't have anything to do with the repairs we had. It's like he said, the way that system is, he's got two or three of them that he services. He said you shouldn't have to take those leads off, but about every two or three years, other than cleaning the filter about every two months. So I think. We might be better off to get him to do it, to dig down and, and take the responsibility to make sure it's done right. Because I really got a good working arrangement with uh, Terry White, this guy from Burton. He's got to come all the way up to Bachelor and have him come up and dig it down. And I think then we'll be good to go, right? We still got a home. We still got a low spot going down the sidewalk in that pipe coming out of the building. Yeah, but if we if we don't get this, we're sure we're going to be dropping down this. I believe, yeah. I believe we get this done. I believe that when you flush the toilet, instead of it just going down and hitting on the wall of the water, it'll run out the other end of the pipe, correct? Yeah, it will. Yeah. So, so are they cheaper to raise the filter up? Or is that something? That you can't say. So here you got, you got four tanks? Yeah, you got five tanks. Five tanks. Okay, so this tank that we're talking about is aerated. So when this water runs out of this, it's got a filter that goes down like this and it stands up and you pull the filter out the top and clean the filter. Well, that eight foot from that other tank, well, that tank here has settled. And what it has done, it has it's took the end of this pipe down and it's sticking it, it's got it sticking up about four or five inches. I say, I say a good four or five, probably eight inches in the tank trip. Yeah. And so, so what we gotta do is we're gonna have to drain it down, get in there and, and saddle that pipe and, and push it back down so when the water comes out of this building it's got about a six inch drop. And I see what you're saying, but would it be easier just to move the filter either up or down? No, because the pipe is here. Okay. It's done, I mean, you've got to have that filter and you can't move it down because that tank has gone down. Mm -hmm. So you've got a noxious pipe to let the filter down. So it'll be back to Yeah. You got anything? Um, I don't think so. Good chief. I do have one more thing that I want to check. The talking about the carry area. So we resurfaced 43 um, from or 43 to 49 down to 46. I got that invoice, it's like $290,000. And we was going to pay for that out of carry the carryover money. The carryover money is still in the general fund, so I need. Just tell me my right letters. I need a budget mod to move that to gasoline so that I can pay that invoice. I just you know, I don't so have you can, you can legally do move that according to that order. From what I understand, that was already written on that money was sitting there and everyone had already voted and used that. That's the resolution then. Keep right. it. Said it was okay. How much you run about the order or not? Okay. I, I would like to know if that was kind of earmarked. Well, it's the, it's the care of money that was earmarked for this road. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it's just sitting in the general fund and I can't touch it. Uh, so in order for me to pay that invoice using it, I've got to get it to the gas money. And it's, we, we like him. I mean, and the invoice might just go to her? Yeah, to my not house. Give her a check. That's what I was saying. I don't know. That same money, we did a, a road in. In the district. We we started on it in the weather status and we're gonna finish it in the spring. So yes, yeah, so I'll have that to come out of that two hundred and eighty thousand feet. So I'll just do it in more I just send in more further and have her pay out that fund. Carry it was carry over for the general fund. Right there. Yes, ma'am. Young said that it was passed in a past resolution, but it will have to it will have to have a budget increase. Money is there, it's approved in a resolution that was passed. 2020 ish, he just needs approval for budget increase. Okay. So, okay. okay. so if we can make that, we just the money just has to be transferred to the people asking for help for a budget increase. Well, he's got to modify the budget increase. Just to his budget increase. Yeah, they get to his budget. Okay. okay. So, do we need a resolution? We did a resolution to use the money, but we didn't do a resolution to do the budget modification. Until he received the invoice, that it was not worded that he could use the money until the job was done. Yeah. We were going to do another resolution to modify the budget at that time, and we just never did it. So
So does it need to be mentioned in that resolution which you use it for? To for our um, um, twist? Do you say that? I mean that's easy enough to add into it. It's okay. for the Can you all work on that then? Yes. Uh new business consent Just consent agenda. Can I give that? That's good to be business in that way. Okay. We can she can read the right time. We read it in. I just want to make sure we don't that confuse me because if it ended up if you remember we had that COVID money that we used and it allowed us to free up some money in the budget. So we had four fifty thousand dollars left over from that year's budget. And we passed a resolution to use it on those two projects. And but we never passed a resolution to modify the budget to, to move the money. Okay. We approved to use the money, but we didn't approve to move the money, if that makes any sense. But moving and using all the scope money and stuff, but we, we are moving to a new... This, yeah, this is not COVID money. This was carryover. Because of the COVID money, we had a carryover. Yeah. And we used the COVID money all up, and that made for a carryover. So some of this... I, my, my worry is in the future when the auditors and, and have a different concern. I talked to Kim about this. Running about the auditors or who she ran it by, but she told me we could do it. It was legal. So, so the budget did not run. It, it's not been. Yeah, man. Not been even watching the clown, I guess, is what we call it. Laundry. I mean, yeah, it, it was general fund money because there was spent. It was just money we didn't spend because we had to go with money to spend. Okay. I'm afraid. Do we have money in our budget? I guess I need to get a find out how much it's going to cost. That's the reason why I'm going over this because it seriously could be, I, I'd say, wait and figure at the most to do what we got to do. We'll probably, we're here. If we lower that pipe, we're going to have to come out of the mountain center budget. No. Well, does the mountain center have that much money? It's, it's up there. Okay. We just might have to modify that. I'll make a point in our budget so we can do it. But I'll get I'll it off the boat and I'll call it Terry. Yeah. 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 I, I think that it's $10,000 would be good. We spent, we spent about $8,000 on that system out there going to this mess, right? And we got it running. The only thing it is, I just want to get it down with. What do you think it is in cost at the most? I think $7,500. $7,500 meant we go get our own track. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, look, 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 look. I have to know where it's going to be. Can, that can be, the budget can be just later in the year, okay? That's fine. But, but I just don't want to get in the middle of, of somebody, I don't want y'all to know that this money can be spent. I don't want y'all to say I spent the money and, and not. So $7,500 will be okay. Yeah, okay. Everybody's good on $7,500, right? It's something we got to do, or you yeah, yeah. Okay. 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 it's going to be in our tiny car again, but it's been standard today, don't afraid. we got to clean that car? No, you can get to the car. Okay. 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 Thanks, Dan, for that information. Mm -hmm. it's bottom line again. Okay. Y'all get to jail? Okay. All right. I think we're doing good. We're leaving. Everybody ready to meet next week? Thank y'all for meeting this week. Well, I got to go. I got to go. <coughs> 
and that would be this position here. Well, I don't know that. I mean, she's not really her supervisor. I mean, we're her supervisor. Yeah. So I, I, that's why I was going out there. How you going to handle it? Because we do need a record going forward. I don't know how to handle it. I mean, I don't. I mean, do we need to run by Jason or whatever they do? I mean, in <coughs> six months, we need to say you're doing a great job then, but it needs to be put in a file. Okay. So the commission has never had a, right. a classified employee, not since I've been there. Mm -hmm. 